All right, well, we're going to try homemade wine one more time. This time it's scupping on. I've got about, uh, well, it was about half of that basket full. I paid $20 for it. And uh, it's a little more than half, maybe. And uh, I weighed it. And it says it's about, and it's bucket and all, of course, but somewhere around 15 pounds. I'll, you know, 15 and a half pounds. I don't know if you can see that or not, but. 15 and a half pounds bucket and all. I've got me something to to uh, mash them with. Something to put my pulp in maybe. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet because that's actually a pantyhose right there I bought brand new at the Dollar General. So again, about half of that basket full of scuppernongs. And uh, when you look at it in the bucket, it is about two gallons worth of scuffing on. Actually it was about right at two, maybe a little more than two gallons when it's actually leveled out. So we're gonna try that and uh, see what happens start mm, today, which is I think the 13th, I think. So anyhow, I'm gonna add a little sugar and a little water and see what happens. All right, just to give you an idea, that was about a cup, maybe uh, maybe a cup and a half of scuppernongs in there. And I got that much juice out of that much. So, you know, I had to turn it to the sunlight. But you can see maybe a cup and a half, which there's still plenty left in there. So I'm going to uh, crush a few more in there, get the juice, capture the juice. And then I'm going to... Uh, try and put this pantyhose over this uh, uh, strainer and catch the pulp back in it and then make something that I can squeeze out every day for a few days. But anyhow, just to give you an idea, uh, like I said, just a very small amount of the scuppernongs. So. But anyhow, maybe you can see that on there. I'm not sure, but there you go. Okay, so now we're at the step where uh, there is my wart, I think they call it, or uh, scuppernong juice with the uh, pulp in the middle of it. And I'm going to add, I think I'm going to do like two gallons of water. And I think that's uh, up totally up to whoever's doing it. But I'm going to add like two, two gallons of water. I think I'm going to add four pounds of sugar, which I'm going to put in that pot. I'm going to weigh that pot first with that scale. And then I'm going to uh, add four pounds to it. I'm going to put two gallons of water. Then I'm going to add it to that. And I honestly wish I could show you how high that is on there. But it's, you may can see it. It's about a maybe one and three quarter gallon. So I'm going to pretty much double it. Maybe I may go, you know, a little less than two gallons. So it'll be pretty much uh, double the liquid with the pulp in it so but anyhow add sugar and water that's pretty much it i'm using distilled water and uh then i'll tomorrow i'm probably going to add my yeast i i probably won't add it today i'm going to let it sit overnight and then i'm going to add the yeast but anyhow you get the idea okay just for the record I put uh, two gallons of distilled water and four pounds of sugar that I weighed uh, with those scales. So uh, that's exactly what I got. And I don't know if you can see in there or not, but that's what we have. And I'm fixing to set that inside and let it work a little bit. And then tomorrow I'm going to put yeast in it. So it'll really work after tomorrow. But that is uh, skipping on wine in the makings. Alrighty, today is day two. It's probably been about 24 hours since I made, since I uh, crushed my grapes and separated the pulp. Uh, I've just added uh, one tablet that I dissolved in some water of Camden to kill all the wild yeast. And then about 24 hours from then, I'm going to add my uh, yeast, which I've bought some dry wine yeast and I've also brought I got some sterilizer here that <clears throat> I'm spraying my uh, uh, just bought a 
long spoon to uh, just to uh, I sterilize that and then just stir up all the ingredients, all the pulp, and get everything mixed up. Like I said, tomorrow night we'll put the yeast and it'll should start working off. But anyhow, that's where we are on the second day. Okay, uh, we're at day three. I've let it set for four, 20, about 24 hours with that uh, Camden tablet. And uh, we're fixing to raise the lid. And I'm going to put that yeast in it right there. Pitch that yeast on there in just a minute. And uh, we'll just see what it looks like right now. There's how it looks after three days before I stir it. As you can see, it's working on its own yeast, although I put pectin in it. It's pectin, it's, I mean Camden. And, uh, but it didn't kill all the yeast, so, but it doesn't matter. I'm fixing to stir it up, and then I'm going to pitch that yeast, and we'll go from there. And that is day three. Okay, got it stirred up. Fixing to put our uh, dry wine yeast in there. I'm using a dry wine because of the sh sugar content I've got in there. It's going to take some pretty serious uh, uh, yeast, active yeast, or uh, to uh, eat up all that sugar. It's going to probably end up with a pretty high alcohol content, and it might still be a little sweet, but that's what we got. Okay, it's been almost exactly three hours since I've added the yeast and snapped the lid down. And as you can see, I'm getting some uh, pretty good action on my airlock. Uh, I've tried to time it, but you can pretty much see it's uh, it's working pretty fast and got a lot of a lot of yeast action going on this early. There you can see it again. That's about how long it's taken. So there you go, three hours after adding the yeast on day three, and we will check back tomorrow and see what's going on then. Okay, here's what it looks like on what I'm calling day six. Started on Sunday. Today's Friday, the 18th, and you can see we're getting some pretty good action in the airlock. And uh, I'm going to pop that lid off right quick and let you see what it looks like at this time okay here's what it looks like with the lid off day six and if you look real close you can see it almost looks carbonated i mean it is working so i'm about to take my potato masher and i'm going to press the pulp around in that stocking i got there and we'll check it again and put the lid back on it and we'll check it again tomorrow all right here we are on uh, day seven and uh, just to let you know what it looks like, it's a, a bubble on the airlock about every five seconds. But there you go. Well, there's what that pulp looks like on day seven. And you can see it has swelled out a good bit. But again, it still looks carbonated, man. It is working hard. So I'm going to mash it, put the lid back on it, and we'll check it again tomorrow. All right, I've been watching this one, and it... Uh, this is uh, October the 21st on a Monday and this one's been started since last Tuesday and you can see that it has definitely slowed on the uh, airlock action so we're going to uh, stir it up a little bit put the lid back on it and if it stays that slow we may do some racking into the cardboard okay it's uh october the 22nd it's been one week since i put the yeast in that in the uh batch and i've got two tablespoons of pbw in my carboy getting it cleaned up and uh here in just a little bit we're gonna pull the lid off that and uh siphon that over to that jug and We'll get a little better look at it and let it rack a few days and see how it's looking. But it's almost stopped fermenting. I I checked it a while ago and it was uh I've moved the bucket around so it it may not be it might not be accurate to how 
fast the bubbles are coming but about every 15 seconds is what they were before I moved the bucket around so it's really slowed down from where it was but if it gets to going again we'll make another picture in a little bit but okay here's what it looks like <clears throat> with the jug open and that is uh, the nylon stocking I've got the, the pulp in I'm fixing to mash it dry as I can get it I'm going to pull that out I'm going to let it sit for a couple of, or an hour, maybe 30 minutes or so, and then we're going to siphon it off into the carboy. Okay, just for the record, uh, the nylon stocking is something I came up with when I couldn't get cheesecloth at my local uh, Dollar General, actually, and uh, it really worked good. You saw how it looked in the, in the must, and... It, I could I actually took it and wrung it out like a dishcloth. So, I mean, I got it fairly dry. Maybe a little bit of liquid left, but that's uh, that's what's left. And now we're going to let that <coughs> liquid settle out just a little bit and then siphon it. Okay, I, I rinsed that PBW, which is a cleaner, if you don't know, but it's called PBW. I rinsed that out uh, three times. Rinsed it out real good. And uh, I'm just going to leave this sitting here for a little while with that water running in it just to make sure. That you definitely don't want a, a cleaner in your wine, so it's not going to hurt, and water's cheap. So I'm going to let that run for ever how long it takes me to get everything else done. I'll probably do one more rinse, and then we're going to do some uh, siphoning. All right. There it is. After I've transferred it to the bottle, now, I ain't going to lie, I've I pulled most of it out of there, so you can see I didn't leave much, but I think it's better to uh, siphon from uh, that glass bottle where I can see what's going on versus this plastic bucket. But that siphon right there worked fantastic. I did it by myself and no help and uh, really held it off the bottom, and I kind of allowed it to get down that deep. I could have kept a lot more out, but we'll be able to see what it is <clears throat> when it settles and when I'm siphoning it the next time, back into the bucket, and then get the, uh, you know, the sediment off the bottom. It'll be a lot easier from that carboy than it was that plastic jug. But I did taste it, and it's... You know, some people had already told me I'd put too much sugar, maybe, but it's not sweet. I mean, it's it's, it's not very sweet. It's it could uh, it, it's good. It's got a scuffing on flavor, but it's uh, it's not as sweet as everybody made out like it was going to be. High in alcohol, I, I can feel the alcohol. Not only taste it, I can feel it. So that's what it looks like, and that's October the twenty second, seven days after adding the yeast. And uh, let that set maybe a day or two. I don't know. We'll see what it looks like tomorrow. Maybe rack it back into here. And then right back into there. But we'll see what it looks like tomorrow. Well, uh, here's the uh, final product. This is January the 26th. And uh, as you can see, I, we've uh, got quite a few bottles. I actually did another batch after the one I videoed. And uh, changed a few things, but roughly it was pretty close to the same stuff. When you, you know, even I lowered, I mean, raised the sugar, even lowered the sugar on one. But anyhow, this one, as you can see, it probably could still use racking a little bit. They've all got a little bit on, a little bit on the bottom. These I make up a little sweeter than the other one. My mother likes it a little sweeter than, than a uh, dry. I kind of like that uh, half gallon per gallon right there. I add a little sugar to it after it's fermented. And, uh, don't, you know, learning how to do it. I don't really know. Just playing. And hope that's what it's for. I'm hoping that, uh, everyone watches it, you know, learn something. Might learn what to do. Might learn not what to do, you know. But I hope you enjoyed the video. And, and I hope you make some good wine. And let me know if I, if you got any tips for me. I appreciate it. Y'all have a good day. And come back to see me.